Okay, YouTube, you love a uh, teardown video or a video where something gets taken apart for some reason. Um, and so do I, to be honest with you. Don't know why. But anyway, here's the old suspension fork I've just taken off of my hybrid. And um, I'm interested to see what's inside because I've never seen what's inside one of these uh, budget suspension forks. So just for the record, this is an SR Suntour suspension fork off of a hybrid, uh, a broad Boardman hybrid. And um, the problem it developed was it wouldn't lock out and then it wouldn't do a lot of anything. And then it started spewing oil out of uh, this fork leg here. So I imagine what's happened and I imagine what you've got in here is probably uh, a spring to uh, provide the suspension and probably a lockout cartridge. Now I'm guessing because there's probably not any oil in these forks by design I wouldn't have thought. I would have thought the lockout cartridge is this side. Well that figures because the lockout would have been on the top there. And um, I'm guessing that what's happened is that the lockout cartridge has probably exploded through, to, through abuse um, and just given up the ghost, which is why we've now got oil out of here. So what I'm going to do is just pull this apart because it's totally scrap. I'm not going to do any harm to it. And um, yeah, I'm interested to see what's in it as well. So I don't think I'm going to need anything too complicated to take this apart. Um, and the first part I understand is to take out the locking ring. Uh, now there would normally be a little blue lever on the top here uh, where you, you lock the fork. Uh, that fell off a long time ago so uh, obviously that's not here. Now I've seen a video where these are just taken out with a pair of needle nose pliers but there you go. Right, okay. So that little gizmo there, that goes into the top of the lockout cartridge. And um, if you if you use the little blue lever on top here to lock the fork, that's what you're turning. Okay. So with that out of the way, I can see an Allen head in here. Um, and we've got a couple of Allen bolts in the bottom of the fork there. So let's begin by loosening those off. And they look, ooh, what would we say? About a six. This is where I totally embarrass myself. No, nope, they're probably a five. Okay, yeah, that's a five. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to loosen these. But I'm not going to take them all the way out yet because you need these in to release the fork innards from the bottoms of the legs, which you do like this. Okay, so actually, I'm not convinced that one has loosened properly. That should have got it. So let's take these out. Like I say, if this was a good fork, I definitely wouldn't be treating it like this. But uh, it's not, so I am. So enjoy. Everybody loves a bit of wanton destruction from time to time. Okay. So my uh, auxiliary light has just uh, gone into protest mode on me. Yeah, battery's getting low. So, anyway, right. So, I'm going to undo this kitty here as well. And that's going to be a five as well. There you go. All right. Let's take that all the way out. Going to need um, a slimmer Allen socket for that. There we go. Right, take that kitty all the way out. There you go. Right. There should, in theory, be nothing holding this together now, apart from friction. So, let's see. Yep, yeah, there we go. We can pull the bottoms off. Okay. So, there we are. 
Right, they're the bottoms of your fork legs. If you were going to keep this fork, if you were going to service it, uh, I guess probably what you'd want to be doing is checking that these seals are in good order, uh, that the little um, lock rings on them, you can see just there, are good. And also, you'd probably want to get down that fork leg with something and clean it out. Uh, but like I say, these are these are just scrap. This is just an exercise, really. So, right, so this is the lock outside. Um, and as I say, this is the cartridge. Oh, there you go, lights come back on. This is the lockout cartridge. Now it looks like that's still secured. Can't for the life of me see how. Unless what we do is prise this top cap off. There we go. Take that kitty off. Now we've got a uh, socket on there. Probably one on the other side as well. Surprise these. Again, don't cringe. This shock, uh, this fork rather, is completely scrap. Well, look at that. I never knew that. There's a. Um, they don't show you that in the manual, and I'm just going to try and get some light on it. Hidden under that cap is a compression adjuster. So um, if you've got one of these forks, that's probably worth knowing about. This is uh, an SR Suntour NEX fork. So uh, yeah, you've got a little compression adjuster under there. Goodness gracious, never knew that that was in there. So uh, what a surprise. Okay. Now I want to see if I can get this cartridge out. So I'm going to have to get a socket on here. And that's quite a big socket. Bear with me. There you go. So that, for reference, is a 21 mil. Okay, YouTube. So uh, I've just put this in a vise. And again, I stress, it's a scrap fork. Forgive the lack of mechanical sympathy I'm showing here. Um, and I'm going to just try and take this bolt out the top. There you go. Right, so yeah, that's definitely connected to that. So, here we have the lockout cartridge. Whoa, look at that. Covered in oil. That's the lockout cartridge. Uh, you probably can't see it, but Boy, it's covered in oil at the bottom here. Um, and I can't believe that's a, a good state of affairs. I don't believe that that was part of the original design criteria. I imagine that at one point in its poor life, uh, most of that oil would have been inside it. Uh, as you can see, it says contains high pressure gas. Do not open, puncture or burn. Uh, do not loosen the adjuster screw. Mm, interesting. Where's the adjuster screw? <laughs> no, I won't do that. That would be um, juvenile, wouldn't it? So yeah, so that's scrap. So as you can see, that's, that is the lockout side. Uh, I, it is, I think, possible to replace these lockout cartridges on their own. Um, but in my case, it was actually cheaper to buy the whole fork than it was to buy this cartridge. So um, yeah, well, that's scrap. Interesting piece of scrap, but scrap nonetheless. And uh, in the other side of the fork, he says, turning it round, again, forgive the uh, rough treatment of this component, but again, it is scrap. So, yeah, in this side, we've got the, uh, the compression. So, I'm guessing, again, there's uh, not a very good angle for you, is it? Let's move you around here. So, again compression side there um, and this this is this is really funny because when I was on the bike okay yeah I admit I'm probably a little bit heavier uh, than this was designed for there was just this was no resistance here at all this was bottoming bottoming out all the time I would think to remove this you need a special tool um, but I'm gonna try a little bit of brute force and ignorance so on top of there so on top of here is a castellated nut. 
Uh, and I would think that there's uh, some sort of splined tool that goes in there, the official tool, to remove it. Uh, but there is, of course, uh, if you've removed castellated nuts without a special tool before, uh, using just brute force and ignorance, there is another way to do it. So I'm just going to put this light down and I'm going to do it the, uh, the good old fashioned or the bodger's way. So I've just got a screwdriver into the splines and knock it round. This is where there's probably a YouTube video that says, whatever you do, don't take the uh, suspension side out, the uh, splined nut out, uh, otherwise some spring will fly out and kill you. So uh, it's going to stand clear and just take that out. There you go, that's coming out the top there. Hey, voila, there's your spring. Okay, so um, what I want to do is I'd rather like to take this rod out so that the fork's completely disassembled. Uh, and the way to do that is to lock a pair of uh, mole grips onto there, vice grips, call them what you will. And then you've got some flats uh, on the end of this little fastener here, the one that sort of bolts into the bottom of the, floor, the fork. And those flats are roughly 9mm. So just get a 9mm spanner on and you can wind that little sucker off. Voila. Oh, I've done those up tight. Release. Thank you. And then, uh, you need a degree of precision to remove this. There you go. So, so there it is. That's, um, that what's, that's what essentially deals with your, uh, your gives you your suspension suspension and your compression rather so this uh, in combination with this uh, you've got compression and rebound controlled there basically um, and uh, yeah so gas in one side spring in the other so like I say this is uh, just a completely scrap fork uh, totally scrap now um, and uh, like I say, I was just interested to see what was inside it uh, because I've never taken one of these budget forks apart. In fact, I've never taken a suspension fork apart at all. So uh, this was an education for me. Anyway, um, just five minutes of nonsense there. I hope you enjoyed that um, and found it educational in some respect. Uh, no fork was harmed in the making of this, pro this, this video. Well, no decent fork, only a fork I was going to scrap anyway. So, um, yeah, thanks for watching, and uh, I'll keep these rolling.